Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I have another great technique that was created by my friend Alessandro Boncio, and I'm gonna walk you through it. We're gonna be doing a peeling effect. So we're gonna take the hood of this car and have it look like there is a wind or a force peeling away the paint off of this hood. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take this model and duplicate the hood element, and we'll get rid of the model for right now. So here's the hood element, and we're gonna make sure we're in point mode, and we're gonna make a vertex map. So first thing we'll do is go to select set vertex weight, and we're gonna make sure that we're at 0%, and we'll hit okay. And we're gonna do the exact same thing again to define the upper range of the vertex map. So we'll go to set vertex weight, and instead of 0%, this time we're gonna do 100%, and we'll hit okay, and it should turn yellow. All right, so here's our vertex tag. And if you go to the basic tab, you can click on use fields. And then if we go to the fields tab, you'll see that we have a freeze added. Now, when we were doing some experimenting, we found out that this freeze that was added, it's pretty buggy for some reason. So what we found that works is just delete that one and then re-add it. So delete that and then go under this tab right here and find freeze, the snowflake. All right, so we have our freeze here and we're gonna change it from uh, blending mode of normal to add. And let's go down to the settings of the freeze. Under mode, we'll change it from none to grow. Now here's a really important thing you need to do is hit this clear button once you set this up. So make sure to hit clear and then your vertex map will turn red and everything should be set up. Now we're gonna animate this on by using a random field. Right now, nothing's happening. We actually have to specify what's going to be growing on. And we're gonna do that with a random field right here. So you can see the random noise. We can change that to something a little bit more obvious, maybe a wavy turbulence. All right, so we have that noise under the random field. Let's drag that one down below freeze and let's change it from max to subtract. All right, so we're subtracting that noise and now we need to have it triggered on by something. And we're gonna trigger it on with a spherical field. So we'll add a spherical field and let's make sure this one is below the random field and we'll change it from max to just normal. And if we grab that spherical field and move it through here, you can see that we are taking that noise and slowly growing it on here. And this is actually animated. So if we have it set right here, if we go to our vertex tag and we um, look at that freeze, because it's set to grow, it's going to actually grow on the animation from here. And if we take the spherical field and we move it so just a little bit on the top of the hood is showing, it's going to start that growing animation from here and then have this really nice organic growth. And we're gonna use this to drive that cloth tearing animation. If you wanted it to start at zero, you could actually just start it here and it won't grow at all. And then you could keyframe this animation so that it grows on, but we'll just leave it right here for the tutorial. All right, so from here we need to add this to a cloth object so that we can tear it. So we'll right click on that hood. We're gonna to go to simulation and cloth. And before we dial anything in, let's actually add this to a cloth object because then it's gonna work a lot better. So we'll add a cloth surface and we'll drag it into the cloth surface. And under there, we're gonna hit zero subdivisions for now, but we'll add a little bit of thickness. All right, so let's play with all these settings. First thing I wanted to mention is that if you look at all of these different forces like stiffness or friction, there's a map slot underneath it and that's for a vertex map. So if you wanna play around with just say having friction on parts of your vertex map, you can just drag this map into the slot and you're gonna get some really nice effects that are a bit more realistic. But anyway, that's what that map slot is for if you wanted to play with that in the future. Let's go to our forces tab and make sure we set the gravity to zero. We don't want this falling, we want it to stay in place. If we hit play, you'll see that's kind of puffing up and turning into cloth, but it's not tearing at all. We have to actually turn on the tear option under tag. There's this use tear. And that's gonna introduce this tearing percentage and 120% actually works pretty well, but you can dial in the, the uh, kind of the amount of force needed before the polygons push apart and then rip from each other. So if we did 120%, I think it's actually gonna be pretty close. You can see that all these pieces are starting to tear away. But you'll notice that our vertex map is not affecting this at all. All these are ripping away from random spots here, but there's no uh, kind of field pushing through them and ripping them away. And we're gonna do that by using forces. So let's add a wind. Now there's two different winds. We're gonna make sure that we add this one, which is the wind object. And let's crank up the wind speed by quite a bit, maybe 150, add a little bit of turbulence. And under mode, let's change it to aerodynamics wind. 
So you can see that the wind is pushing all these pieces back and it is shredding them, but it's shredding the entire uh, polygon object. We're not actually using that vertex map right now. So what we need to do is go to the wind and under fields, the nice thing about these fields is that we can use the same one. So we can drag this spherical field and this random field into the slot of that wind. And now it's gonna match up exactly on those parts of the hood that we want to tear. So you can see that I'll have the initial tear, but then it's gonna come follow through here and start ripping these pieces away based on the animated vertex map. All right, so this is looking really cool. And obviously you can add some more subdivisions, make it a little, look a little bit more realistic or play with the tear settings. But one thing that is happening is these are being torn and also falling down as well as up. We don't want them to fall down and intersect with the geometry below. So we're going to add a gravity. So we'll add a gravity, but we're gonna actually reverse the gravity so they're getting sucked up. So we'll go to the object and instead of 250, we'll go minus and we'll probably do even more, 2500, change the mode to aerodynamics wind, and then they'll get sucked up. But just like before, we need to go to the fields and make sure that we're using the same fields as the wind. And now the gravity is only gonna be affecting the pieces that get ripped off and tear away, not the rest of the object. So now if we hit play, you're gonna have these tearing effects. The wind's gonna rip through here and peel them away and tear them, and the gravity is gonna suck them up and away. And this is a really great reveal effect. You can do this on logos or any objects to reveal something below, and it looks really, really cool. And like I said, make sure you go in and you uh, increase some of the resolution or add some more subdivision to get more realistic pieces. But that is the general concept. Again, huge shout out to Alessandro Boncio for coming up with this great technique. Hope you all found it useful and learned something new, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.